YouTube! What the crap is good? Oh wait, I'm not! Welcome folks, to a 2v2 online battle. Myself as the Chaos with an unlikely ally of Bretonia, and the Crooked Moon with a likely ally of the Greenskins. We're on the Ashen Hall map, it's a pretty cool map, it's got lots of hills, lots of trees, some kind of obstacles in the way so it's not a completely flat map or anything, so it's a pretty good tactical little map. Let's get stuck into some armies, shall we? Beginning with my almighty Chaos Army. I've got three units of Chaos Warriors. These are the non-armor piercing ones. I thought the Greenskins and Goblins have a lot of unarmored units. And if they bring them, I've got them covered. I've also got some Aspiring Champions for the same reason. I've got two units of those. So going to be looking for those lesser armor targets for them to take on. They're pretty cool looking in their gold armor. Although this guy has no eye holes in his helmet. Which is somewhat of a hindrance, I think. This guy's got eye holes. Why do you not have eye holes? Somebody get this man some eye holes. Ridiculous. Anyway. I've also got some Chaos Warriors with great weapons for all my armor piercing needs. I have upgraded them slightly to take on the Black Orcs a little bit. And I've also got some Chaos Trolls. Only one unit of those and then one unit of armored ones as well. Look at his little face. Very cute. Um, I've got an even amount of armor piercing and non-armor piercing there in most of my infantry. I've got two units of Halberds, one at either end of course, my anti-large protection. I've also got one of my favorite units, the Gore Beast Chariot. Slightly upgraded it as well to make it even more brutal. And he is going to whip some mother frickers. I also have some Chaos Warhounds to keep any faster units at bay. And all this is led by the one and only... Whoop, over the tree. Kolek Sun Eater. The big man himself. I'm a big fan of Kolek. Don't hide behind your horn, mate. Come on, show your face. No, he's too busy admiring his hammer. Big fan of Kolek. He is a cataclysmic force to be reckoned with. You do have to be careful with him, though, because he's surprisingly not the toughest in the world, it seems. Got some horse marauders as well. Or marauder horsemen, even. They're looking to get a few sneaky shots off on some big ones. So I've got them in the trees, Vanguard deployed up. My Bretonian ally is the King of Mustaches. He has a lot of mustaches, mustache swordsmen, uh, otherwise known as foot squires. He's got a lot of those, so he's got a lot of armor piercing to deal with all the Black Orcs and such, if there should be any, of course. Spearmen on either end of his flanks, and a Grail Relique to buff that leadership as well. He's brought a little bit of ranged along, two units of Peasant Bowmen with fire arrows, so they should be pretty handy. More spearmen as well, just probably to protect his flanks. And then his general is the good old Fey Enchantress in all her beauty. With two units of Knights of the Realm at her side. So she's going to be travelling around with them, I'm going to assume. So she should be pretty safe. He's also got some questing knights hidden up on the hill. So they're going to be a little surprise attack. And my ally has a formation, which is nice to see. I always check if my ally's in a formation, because it's usually a good indication of whether they're any good or not. Now for our adversaries, let's begin with the Crooked Moon. He's got three units of Skirmisher Cavs of types. They're all the Regiment of Renown type ones, so they've all got special abilities of some kind. But they're going to be looking to harass me and cause me some problems. Obviously, I can't really deal with them too well because I don't have Skirmishers. And then over on the hill, the bulk of his army is all Night Goblins and Nasty Skulkers. So they can be pretty dangerous. Nasty Skulkers got a lot of armor piercing. He's got more Regiments of Renown type ones there as well. Night Goblins have got poison, of course, so they're going to be good for keeping the Nasty Skulkers around a bit longer. That one's got a metal nose. That is fanatical dedication there, which is slightly terrifying. He's also got three units of goblin archers, so he does have some range capabilities as well. Again, they have poison. He's also got a goblin shaman somewhere, hidden behind these black orcs. He's just cowering behind the black orcs at the moment. And then his general here is a night goblin war boss who's riding a squig. So he can actually be pretty dangerous, even though he's only small. He's supported by some squig hoppers and two goblin big bosses. So a little bit of a goon squad, or noob squad as I like to call it. So we've got to watch out for one of those. He's got four units overall, four characters overall, I should say. And then the green skin player has the same thing. He's got Grimgore, two goblin big bosses, and an orc shaman. So eight characters overall for us to deal with, compared to our two characters. It's going to be pretty tough. As for the main bulk of the green skin army, he's got some crimson killers, a very cool looking unit, if nothing else, but they are also very dangerous, very high damage output. And then it's pretty much just black orcs, who of course are also very dangerous and high on the damage. And then some big ones for all his anti-large needs. And he's got two units of those at either end of his Black Orc line. So a pretty good combination of armies there. I'm not sure if these two guys were playing together. It was a ranked match, so could have been buddies. And I think their armies complement each other quite well. I think ours do too, though. So it's kind of an even fight. So we'll see how this one plays out. These Crooked Moon Skirmisher Cavalry's coming up to my flank here. I'm going to pull my units into the trees to stop them getting shot at. Because there's not a lot I can do to stop this. My Horse Marauders are on the other side of the map at the moment. He's going to sit there and start peppering me with missiles, and I decide, you know what, I can't have this. I'm sending out my Chaos Warhounds. I'm not really sure how they'll fare against these, because they are not terrible in melee. But he doesn't seem to have them on skirmish, so I'm not sure whether he wanted them to fight the Warhounds, or whether he just didn't notice, but they are indeed fighting the Warhounds. 
And we're doing quite a bit of damage to them. Got them down to nearly half health, taking about a third off there. They are going to get poisoned though, my Warhound, so their speed is going to be compromised. Which is going to make it hard for us to try and catch them. So we're only down to, down to 73 speed, down from like 90. So we can't really catch any of these units, they're all going to get away from us. So I'm going to pull back. I'm just trying to keep them at bay more than anything now. I just want to stop them from firing on my main army. If they fire at my Warhounds a little bit, that's fine. Not a big deal if I lose them. Simply trying to minimise their damage to important units. I started to bring over my horsemen to help out, but then I stopped. I saw these goblins, I thought, you know what? I can take time out of my day to throw javelins at some goblins. Let's do that. Oh, got one there. Yeah, you got stuck with three javelins. Poor fella. They're off skis though, just a quick skirmish on them, and then we're going to get straight after their skirmish units. Now, I put them on melee here. I told them to go into melee after these units, which probably wasn't the best idea. I think they would have been better throwing javelins and chasing them off, because I was just trying to keep them moving and keep them away from my main army, like I keep saying. But they probably would have done more damage if they were just throwing javelins, because, again, they're struggling to catch them because of the poison. I bring my warhounds back in now, though, to try and help them and support them. He was bringing their spiders over to try and get into them. So I'm going to do my best to get rid of all these as much as I can. I'm not expecting to, to beat them or to win this little skirmish, but if I can do as much damage as possible, that's just going to help me out later. Not a lot else going on at the moment. Main armies are just posturing and chilling out. I try to get after these chariots as they're sat still. Get a little bit of a munch on them. Not too much, but again, I decide to retreat with my warhounds as I don't want to lose them just yet. The longer I can keep them alive and just keep them harassing their harassing units, then, you know, it stops them from harassing me. I was going to keep running through and get after these goblin archers because they're a little bit exposed, but he did turn them to face my warhounds, so I thought he's ready for it. This guy clearly knows what he's doing. He's not stupid, so I decided to pull my warhounds back. Like I said, keep them safe. It's nice to have a game where all four players seem to know what they're doing. It's a rare thing to have in a 2v2. I'm starting to mobilise my main army now, coming out of the trees. Send them a warhounds in there to try and get into them a little bit more. He's trying to chase off my horse marauders. He's let his goblin wolf riders keep chasing them. They're going to struggle to get away from them. He's going to try and chase them off the map. But in the trees, something lurks. It's ruining my climactic timing of this. They're still chasing them. Um, there she is. The Fey Enchantress has come to save my lowly horseman. She is, of course, backed by her loyal Knights of the Realm. She's going to start to reduce the health of all them because she's simply nearby them. Pretty nice effect of the old Fey Enchantress. But they're going to make short work of those Goblin Wolf Riders. So a nice play from my ally there. He's cut them off and I'm guessing the Goblin Wolf player didn't maybe see this beforehand. Maybe he did, but he couldn't get away in time. But a nice bit of support there from my ally. My main army is deployed and ready for action. My ally is moving his army up, having a little bit of a skirmish with the Goblins. And we are ready to throw down this small opening. This plane will be our battlefield with all these... Tons of black orcs coming my way, which looks a little bit terrifying when I look at it like that. But hey, I'm the Chaos. I've got lots of tough units too. The goblins are coming in again on the flank. These goblin wolf chariots are charging towards my halberds, who are moving, so they're not going to get a charge defense. I try to get them set before they arrive. Not sure if they do. I don't think they do because a few are still moving, but didn't really take much damage. And the goblin wolf chariot, you can see, its health is flying down. Probably the worst choice unit to charge a chariot into, as they may be the best anti-large infantry in the game. I returned the favour by charging into his Black Orc, done a little bit of damage. My Gorby's Chariot on a little bit of a warpath. Although moving rather slowly towards the back of those goblins. Oh, you can see the noob squad over here has flanked around my ally. He's going to have to block up here. To, oh, he's doing that, I think. Good timing. So he's protecting against this. See, this is what I mean. Players who know what they're doing. I like it. Petronia is full-on engaged now with the Black Orcs and the Night Goblins. On my side, I was trying to get my Great Weapon Chaos Warriors into these Black Orcs. But the Crooked Moon player threw some goblins in my way, meaning that my heavy armour piercing unit was going to be fighting some non-heavily armoured goblins. So it's not the best matchup for them. So I'm going to send in my normal Chaos Warriors to fight the goblins and then try to get the armour piercing on the Black Orcs. The Foot Squires engage with the Black Orcs. This is a fight they would normally lose by a country mile, but they do have the numbers advantage. There's a lot more Foot Squires than there are Black Orcs. But Itchy Nuisance was cast on the Foot Squires there, so that's going to weaken them to the Black Orcs. Lots of nasty skulkers in here. They're going to do okay against foot squires, damage wise. Black Orcs on my side not engaging. The Goon Squad's charging around. And my side's front line's about to crash in. Sending in my Trollsies. And everything's about to kick off. Let's take a look at this a sec. So we've got two front lines here going on. My allies and my front line. There's a gap here, which is an opportunity in my eyes, and also a gap here. So that's flanking heaven. Two places to flank from. So I'm going to fill up those gaps. Send in the halberds in that one. There's not a lot else for them to fight, so I'm just going to send them in. And then I'm going to flank around the left. 
In hindsight, I should have used my trolls for flanking, I think, as they're faster, so better for flanking anyway, and would have a nice clean attack line on the enemy, meaning they won't be fighting in amongst my infantry and smashing my infantry in the face. Speaking of smashing stuff in the face, my champions are about to smash a lot of goblin faces into the ground. And the goblin general trying to get in the back here, Bretonia protecting his archers well with spears there. Kolek about to get stuck in. These halberds, I managed to get them into these spider riders and stuff. I guess he didn't put them on skirmish and didn't see me put my halberds into them. Definitely don't want to leave them with halberds. Kolek's in here now though, smashing black orcs. My flanking units getting into some biggins here, my aspiring champions there. They should do okay against them. Flanking round with my other unit to envelop this side. The Kolek trying to get after black orcs. There were some biggins in here who are obviously anti life so a little bit of a danger to him, but not too big of a danger. So I left him there just to smash black orcs up. Goon Squad trying to get rid of my chariot there, but my ally has come to save me with some spearmen. Of course, great unit for taking down all of this stuff here, thanks to my trusty Bretonian friend there. So I seem to be doing okay across my front line, taking down quite a lot of Black Orcs. However, the Goon Squad has just arrived, and I do not want anything to do with them, so I'm going to get Kolek out of there as quick as possible. They will very quickly do a lot of damage to Kolek, if not kill him, so I've got to try and stay away from them as much as possible, as does my ally. I do see a new target though for Kolek, in this tiny little Goblin Shaman. Oh, he got smashed. How is he not paced? He is getting thrown around. All the while though, while Kolek is bullying this goblin, the goon squad is going to come out of the woodwork and try to get him as goon squad players tend to do. They try to get every opportunity to try and get your general dead quick. So you have to be on your tip top toes and get the frick away from it. So I'm going to pull through my allies units here. This will stop them from being able to run through it and chase me. Allowing Kolek to fight another day. And this type of thing is imperative when you're facing these types of squads. You have to just try and get away from it as much as you can. You can't stand and try to trade with it and try and fight with it. My Gorby's Chariot here only got four kills. A bit pathetic so far. Bretonian horses and some halberdiers over here now. My units have routed. Some of my Chaos Warriors are gone. My trolls have gone because they obviously have terrible leadership anyway. My great weapons though, 81 kills. They've been putting their work in. Good to see, good to see. Lots of Black Orcs still charging around though. Fae Enchantress coming in here. She's charging towards the Goon Squad. Probably never a good idea. Oh, she dropped a spell there. Nice. That is a pretty strong spell. The Bretonian Moustache Swordsmen have lost to the Black Orcs, of course, though. But they are currently doing nothing. There are some Foot Squires here with their back to some Black Orcs as well. That's just a terrible idea. Obviously, he hasn't noticed them yet. Got a few units out wide. I've got some units over here. I'm starting to bring mine back by the looks of it. Foot Squires here making their way back as well. It's got the arrows firing on them now. That's a pretty good call. So a fairly even fight so far. Every army has had a fair amount of losses. Oh, the Fae Enchantress over here in a spot of bother. How fast is that spider? She's meant to have like 92 speed. She's probably poisoned. That's why he's keeping up. She's in trouble though. She's got three units on her. And she's going to be poisoned. One of my routed units sits in the trees. He's going to run through it. Oh, clever. I didn't even notice this happened. So he's managed to tie up those three units in my unit that was routed and was just sat there. And she's going to manage to escape. That is very clever. I totally planned that. That was totally my idea. I'm such a great player for leaving that there and helping my ally. What a great guy. Um, a very lucky escape for the Fae Enchantress there. Making use of my routed unit. My Gorby's Chariot here has got a few kills now. 48 kills. He's finally doing something. Kolek smashing some Crimson Killers. See, it's now safe for Kolek to be around because the Goon Squad's gone away for a while. Lots of units returning though. Good positioning up on the hill there for those archers. Knights of the Realm finally routing. Gorby's Chariot just mashing whatever it can. My aspiring champions taking on quite a few goblins here. Lots of nasty skulkers could do a lot of damage to them. Foot squares back to taking on this unit of black orcs. Looks like they might be able to do it. They've got the numbers there. A few scattered green skin units all over the place. I'm charging through some big bosses. Still a pretty tough one to call who's winning at the moment. There's still a lot of units around for both sides. I'm a little bit thin on units, but then I had less. The green skin goon squad coming back after Kolek. Got to get him away again. But then Kolek spots Christmas. Just absolute Christmas. All these goblins, fairly beaten up. Kolek, of course, causes terror. These goblins are just going to get absolutely destroyed by Kolek. So they do nothing but run away. And that's all they can do, really. Look at the size of Kolek. And look at all these tiny little goblins. He's managed to rout one, oh, about 10 units there. I can't even count them. There's too many. Kolek's terror ability really coming into play there. Missiles coming in from my ally. The Night Goblin Commander coming after me now. He's going to try and throw down with Kolek. An interesting choice. Kolek a little bit lower on the health, but Kolek hits a hell of a lot harder, as you just saw how much health he lost there. Quite a substantial amount. But then, 
the goblin big bosses are going to arrive, so of course, that's a bad idea for Kolak to be fighting them. Going to pull him away. He is going to struggle, though, because they are on spiders and a squig, so they're quite hard to get away from. My ally, though, sees this, and he brings over his spearmen to try and help me. This allows me to pull Kolak through them and get all these goblin big bosses tied up fighting the spearmen. Great teamwork from my ally there. He knows the importance of keeping my general alive and keeping me in the fight, because it means that he's got a better chance of winning, so... It's great when you get a player who recognises that and understands those opportunities. Oh, ah, troll being sick on Grimgore there. That's the ultimate insult. I'm getting everything I can onto Grimgore, trying to do as much damage to him as I can with the units that I have left. Just charged in with my Gorby's chariot, still charging them around, doing what I can. I think I just charged Kolek into a big boss there to try and get a little charge. A lot of these units returning though. Goblins, Black Orcs, Goblin big boss there coming back as well. So it's not over yet. There's still a lot to deal with. They keep coming back. Oh, let's just take a moment here just to admire the death that has so far ensued in this battle. So many corpses. Horses, orcs, chaos warriors. All the death. It's been a bloody battle. It's been a tough battle so far, and it ain't over yet. Charging in my gore beast here. Just trying to do whatever damage I can to their character units, because they're obviously the dangerous ones to me. We've done quite well to survive so far without our generals being killed. Grimgore trying to get away, but the trolls aren't having it. Knocking him down, keeping on him, doing as much damage as we can. He's sending over his big bosses by the looks of it and some Crimson Killers. I'm going to go ahead and intercept those Crimson Killers though with my Gorbis Chariot, a beautiful charge. I was going to charge in to the Nasty Skulkers there, but you see me turn back because I realised that they have that bomb which reduces your speed by like 70% and then my Gorbis Chariot would just get destroyed probably and tied up. So I was trying to get them away as quick as possible. The Enchantress just missing with a spell there. That probably would have routed a lot of units if you managed to get hit with it. These spiders are on my Gorbis though, starting to waver them. I'm going to go through the spears, charge into them again. Going to get those tied up and speared, bit of a Cav Spear Trap there. And a big clump up of units going here. So I sent Kolek in again, even though he's a little bit low on health. Cast his spell there, electrocute some mofos. But I sent Kolek in again to try and take advantage of that terror ability. Try and scare some of these units off. Don't want to keep Kolek there too long because Gringor's there, big boss is there. But we see we're routing some of these units now. So it looks like it worked. Going to get Kolek away though, find him a new target. He spots a lone unit of archers back there. They're going to get thoroughly battered. We're routing a lot there units, but we do have some routing of our own. Bretonia is looking pretty strong though, they don't have too much routing, which is odd considering they're probably the ones with the lowest leadership. But they're sticking in there, that Grail Relic probably is the one that's keeping them in the fight. Still got that unit in the trees which I haven't even noticed. Routed units there, so it's looking like we've pretty much got it in the bag. They're trying to get after Kolek still though, still on him, he's not giving up. I'm going to try to pull Kolek away, don't want him to fight it, he's getting really low on health now. I'm just going to try and just keep running him away, keep running him away. <laughs> gonna stay on him. You can see I'm trying to get my halberds into him there. Gotta get him away. It, at this point, even if Kolek did die now, it's probably still fine. My ally has quite a lot of troops left. Again, I'm gonna pull it through spearmen. My ally helping me out there. Putting his spearmen out wide so I could run through them. Looking like we've got him mopped up now. Grimgore's gone. Oh no, I speak of the devil. Grimgore's coming back with his shaman in tow. So they're still not completely dead yet. But there's a lot of Bretonians and a massive Dragon Ogre still on the warpath. And a few of my Chaos Boys as well. Nice to see them still around. Got Shaman back there, he's casting a couple of spells. Itchy nuisance again. Grimgore though, getting a little bit hammered by the missiles. He's a wavering. Oh, one of my lone halberdiers coming out to get him. Come on, son. Get him. Go on, strike him down. That'll be the ultimate finish. No, he's gone right, mate. Uh, are you the one without the eye holes in the helmet? Where are you going? Oh, you see me try to land one of my spells there. My Kolak spell, my lightning spell. I tried to land it on Grimgore as he was running, but he routed before it got him. I'm still being chased by this damn goblin warboss who I'm trying to escape, and that is an embarrassing sight, to be honest. A massive dragon ogre running away from a little squig with a goblin on it. A little bit embarrassing. Probably should have just turned around and fight him. He's got a lot more health than me, though. But I was determined to keep Kolak alive as a matter of principle. I was like, no, you're not taking my general. You're not taking him. He survived this long. I will keep him alive till the end. I was determined. Even if I could maybe have killed him there. Didn't want to take the risk. Wanted him alive. Going to tie him up though. Goblin big boss is wavering. Or war boss even. He's chasing after the Fae Enchantress. Not sure why she's running away. She's got quite a bit of health there. She is reducing the health of the war boss as well. But he's got nowhere to go. Too many units for him. He can't catch her. And that pretty much spells the end of this one. 
So it was a good fight. I enjoyed this one. It was a good 2v2. Like I said, all the players seemed to know what they're doing. Everyone's army was pretty proficiently built, apart from all the goon squadishness, which was, you know, eight characters against two, which was a little bit silly. But we managed to overcome that hurdle. They had one goblin army, which didn't have a lot of armor piercing, so the green skin player picked that up and chose to take a lot of black orcs. So that's why I said they complemented each other quite well, which made for a slightly more challenging fight. Let's take a look at the numbers. So you can see the deployment, it was pretty even for both sides. One army had a lot of numbers, one with a little bit less. So it's pretty even in that sense. Kolek being the star of my show here. Aspiring champions did okay. Non-armor piercing chaos warriors didn't do so good, but the armor piercing one did pretty damn well. Halberds, one of them did well. Gorby's chariot came good in the end. Trolls did a little bit. A good performance. Goblin army. Some of these regiment units actually did pretty well. I guess that's a lot of horses and warhounds. Nasty skulkers not doing terribly either. They got pretty good kills. Some of these goblins did well. Some of them did pretty much nothing. My ally... Spearmen didn't do a great deal. Foot squires, moustache swordsmen did pretty well in some areas. Their skirmishers got quite a lot of kills actually. They're pretty good. And of course the cavalry's being the main star of the show for Bretonia. Not bad, not bad at all. Good performance. And then the Black Orc guy. Of course lots of Black Orc kills all across the board. Crimson killers as well. Biggins not so much. And some of his lords did okay. Grimgore especially. But yeah. A great battle, I really enjoyed playing this one, I was actually really excited to show this one to you as well because I think it was such a good battle, which I don't really get too often I feel, so hopefully you all enjoy it too. What could have changed, what could have been better in that battle? Well for me, I think flanking with my trolls would have been a really good idea at the start like I said about, and I should have kept a unit of halberds back to keep that goon squad, the uh, goblin goon squad that came around the back of me near the start, I should have kept them in check better with some halberds, would have been the best thing to tie them up with and maybe could have got some of them gone early or done a lot more damage to them early. And I had pretty bad matchups across the front line, my non-armor piercing chaos warriors against black orcs. Pretty bad matchup for them, that's why I needed the trolls around the back to do the flanking to help them out. But I think my main saving grace in this battle was keeping Kolek alive. If I hadn't paid attention to him, he would have got overrun by those goon squads and he would have been dead early and that would have been it for me. So that was really probably my best move is just keeping on Kolek and keeping him moving, keeping him alive. My Bretonian random did really well. He probably could have flanked though with his foot squires as he had the numbers advantage on those Black Orcs. Could have flanked around the back, would have really helped him win that fight against the Black Orcs. Or I'm not actually sure what he did with his questing knights, but using his questing knights to hammer an anvil would have been a great move as well. Sandwiching those Black Orcs between two good armor piercing units. Pretty thoughtful player though, helping me out, putting units in the way so Kolek could run through them to safety. Really an essential thing to be doing when you're facing goon squads. Maybe he could have brought some of his cavalry into the main fight a little bit sooner. He had them running off after those goblin wolf riders, which was a little bit wasn't needed. Only one unit could have chased them down and taken care of them. The other two, or the one in the Fey Enchantress, could have gone to come and help me or himself out. The Crooked Moon and Greenskins. Their plan, of course, was very obvious. They wanted to try and assassinate our lords early and then just float by on the leadership penalty for the win. So they didn't really attempt to do anything other than that. They didn't try to flank us with any of their infantry. They didn't bring any cavalries, really, to try and come around the back and hammer and anvil us. They came to just assassinate us, but we didn't allow it. And that, I think, is about the gist of it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the slightly less goblin-y future.